All right. Friends, drummers, countrymen, lend me your, <laughs> lend me your ears. <clears throat> if you've been watching uh, all these videos, you have seen me make a drum out of a sauna tube, or in this case, a quick tube, a concrete form tube. And you have seen me make drums out of trash cans. No special bearing edges, just filed off the sharp ends or any sharp spots so the heads wouldn't get problem with the heads. This is real tough stuff that is. <clears throat> you have seen me make a drum out of roofing flashing. Roof flashing. I'll get back to that in a second. And you have seen me make drums out of plywood circles. Stacked up, stacked plywood circles, glued. Tough stuff. Now, thickness. Here is, you get at that. Here's a 10 ply Keller maple shell, quarter of an inch thick. And if the camera can focus in, I'm not sure if it will or not, but you can see the layers, the 10 layers of veneers that make up this shell, okay? And the shell has a tone. And if you look at the layers carefully, you're going to see color variations. They're not all the same colors. Why? All right, you remember my, uh, my chunk from the last video, right? So when the log spins, big, huge, sharp knife, the log spins, the knife is cutting off. It could be a 40th of an inch. It could be a 16th, uh, an eighth of an inch. You know, you can see the, well, you can't quite see the layers in this because they're so light, but you can see some of the layers in this plywood are almost a quarter of an inch thick. Some are an eighth of an inch. Just depends on how they do it, you know? Okay, but if I go this way and the branch is going up this way, or just picture this as an entire tree, when you cut a board, if here's a piece of wood, and I even found a piece that had some of this place where the bark was on it, okay? So this tree, this piece of wood, came out of a tree cut vertically. Even if they laid it down, they're cutting, they're cutting that tree vertically. Okay, here's what you get. And when they plane it, okay, two smooth sides, then the butt ends. All right? This. You can't get away from that. It exists. Now, when they cut the veneers off, you'll get some of this, and you'll get that color. What did I just do with the shell? You'll get the lighter color. I'm looking for a different size drum. You'll get the lighter color, and if they run the veneer this way, they're still getting a 4 by 8 sheet or whatever, and if they run it this way, you're going to see this at the top. Then there's the obvious, just a different coloration that can be in the grain of the wood regardless, all right? There's, there's more sugar or whatever, this piece of pine. So... When I go to stack up, when people ask me about density versus thickness, okay, these 10 layers of very thin veneer glued together, wood is a musical organic thing, so you get the tone, this is a, this is a uh, what, a 4 by 14 inch shell piece I'm going to make a snare drum out of, and you get that tone and when they're glued together, you get the rigidity, okay? And they talk a lot about shell rigidity. How much can they hype that? <laughs> you'll, you'll see in just a second. Now, this is a 5 eighth, this is a quarter of an inch. This is 5 eighths of an inch thick. And you'd say the 5 eighths of an inch should produce more volume. Well, not necessarily because Cutting a piece of wood this way, five-eighths of an inch, 
or taking this, the grain's going this way, taking this at quarter of an inch and wrapping it around if I had a steam bent, solid steam bent shell, or just taking all the veneers. And most drums, obviously the veneer, you'll see the veneer grain is running around the shell, sometimes up and down. If I put veneer, an exotic veneer on a shell, I like to run the grain up and down. I don't, I don't wrap it around. I like to go up and down. Even if the shell underneath is made with veneers going this way, maybe that way, and that way, however they want to construct a, uh, a rigid shell wall. There's something that is important here why I make these 5 8 as well. It's not just to try to get as dense a shell as maple, but when you, when you take these three quarter of an inch rings and you stack them up on each other, and I come to that top ring and I've got to put a bearing edge in that, I've got to be really careful. If I wanted that back cut to go all the way out to the edge and just sand out here, that router can take that little piece of layer and rip it right off. I have to be extremely careful and I will generally put a larger outside edge even if I lose some sustain because more shell is touching the heads and I lose some sustain and a little bit of you know high end if I any of that nuances subtleties but if I do and in the last video I showed you the two drums next to each other and the stacked plywood drum same size drums same heads except for that 7.5 rezo head on the on the maple drum you could tell a difference in volume and even though this is 5 eighths of an inch thick compared to a quarter of an inch so I have to bring that bearing in and here on the 6 inch you can see it doesn't come in that much but on some of the shells, uh, the bigger shells, I do. I come in much farther on the outside. Still get to seat my heads just fine, but I get the, I get the, uh, the quality of sound that a, a larger outside edge warrants because I don't want to spend the time to glue up rings and then mess the whole thing up on the router table. Okay, so, th so this idea of here, if I were making a stave drum, right, all my staves, my pieces of wood with their angles cut on them are all going to go around this way and I'm dropping the head basically on the butt end. Okay, that's going to be the top, that's what I put the bearing edge on, the butt end of the wood. In this case, here's how the wood should go in this configuration, but I'm doing it this way. So the cell structure of that 5 eighths of an inch all the way around the shell the cellular structure is different. It's not as dense as the flat cut wood, okay? So the thickness of the shell does not necessarily mean you'll get a more dense shell wall. The material and with a wood shell, the way the grain is going and how the plywood is, is put together makes a difference. Nobody makes drums like this. Well, I take that back. The American Percussion Company, is that what he calls himself? Yeah. He, he makes shells like this. He doesn't do anything with them. I don't know why. He makes nice shells. Um, but I had, I had no knowledge of him when I started doing this. I got this idea of a, of a do-it-yourself, you know, drummer's do-it-yourself forum. Uh, Andy on, uh, what is it, um, Drum Parts, something like drumparts.com. Um, and I saw somebody put up, hey, I made a drum shell like this. And I thought, man, I got to do that. And then I did six years ago, tried it and said, wow, this is pretty cool. So I just kept making more drums. Now, this makes obviously five eighths of an inch thick. This is an incredibly um, rigid shell wall. But can I make a big deal about shell walls? Uh, no. And let me show you why. Now, not to take up your time, I am going to cut the video here, and I'll be back when I get all the untensioning done. Okay, done. And I know you're saying, why don't you just speed up the video? Yeah, because I'm not into all that tech stuff. I'm not a videographer. <laughs> okay, so here's the drum, right? Behold. Just how important is shell wool 
shell wall, I was gonna say shell wood, shell wall density. <laughs> and I know you're sitting out there saying, you have got to be kidding me. I'm not kidding you. As you can see, we're talking less than a sixteenth of an inch. This is flashing material. Metal, galvanized metal flashing material. Density, I could take this and just crush it, bend it right in half. I could put dents in it, go in any, any way I bend this, I'll put dents in it. How can it be a drum? It has no rigidity. Don't you have to have a rigid shell wall? No. You only have to be able to seat the drum heads correctly at the collar and the apex. Tension that drum up to whatever pitch you like, and you're going to get a good drum sound. And you can define good any way you want. In this case, this less than 16th of an inch of roofing material is not as dense as stacked plywood rings or the plywood shell, the typical Keller shell. It doesn't have the same density. It's metal, but it's not as dense. It doesn't have... It's got no tone at all. It's, it's nothing. It's nothing. It's, it's just rolled metal. How can it sound like a drum? Because the sound of a drum is the heads. <laughs> See you next time. Okay. <laughs> Before you go, <laughs> listen to this. See what you think. That's kind of a nice mellow sound. 14 inch. What is it? It's the frame drum. Except this time it has an attack, two ply, heavy duty head on it. Change the heads, change the sound of the drum. No harsh overtones, none of that stuff. <clears throat> no, it doesn't have the body of a drum, of a head on, a couple of heads on a shell. <laughs> no argument there. Can I mic this up and start doing things with it? Oh, yes. And I could do the same thing in every size category that I do a setup like this. Because the sound of a drum is the heads. <laughs> I love this. See you later.